Consider the idea of a function, back in the old high school sense. A function like x squared could be thought of as this sort of transformative thing. It, it had an input that would go in, the input would get transformed by the function, and you'd get an output. So if your function was x squared, then something like 2 would come in, and it would square to 4, and 4 would come out. If it was minus 1, minus 1 would come in, and then minus 1 squared is plus 1, so you, 1 would come out. And so a function was this thing that transformed numbers. Now, in linear algebra, a transformation is going to be basically the same idea as a function. It's just going to transform some vectors into other vectors. Now, contrast that very dynamic sort of transformative picture with something we've seen many times already. This is the linear system ax equal to b. And I would suggest that the way we've been thinking of ax equal to b has been relatively static. Indeed, ax equal to b was just sort of shorthand for this much larger uh, set of notation, which was a linear system. So a linear system like this is often thought of as being quite static or unchanging. It just sort of sits there. It's a system of equations. You can write them down. They have solutions. You can write them down. But it's just sort of like an answer to this question. Contrast that with the dynamic picture that we were suggesting for a function, where you have an input and it's transformed into an output. But what we're going to do in this video is we're going to see how ax equal to b can be thought of in this more dynamic way. Now, the first point that I want to make is that if your a here is going to be an m by n matrix, then what it does is it transforms vectors that are going to live inside of rn, and it spits out vectors that are going to live inside. And then it spits out vectors that are going to live inside of Rm. So in other words, I'm already starting to think of this as you start with an input value that's going to be this thing in Rn, that's going to be your input. It lives in Rn, and what you get out of it after you multiply by this matrix A is going to be an output, and that output lives in Rm. By the way, in multivariable calculus, we've actually seen the same thing. Um, multivariable functions are considered where the inputs might live in Rn, and the outputs might live in Rm as well. So here is my generic notation for a transformation. I'm going to use the symbol t instead of the symbol f, which we used to use in calculus and high school for a function. I'm going to use t here in linear algebra. And I'm going to say that t is a transformation that starts with inputs in Rn and outputs in Rm. It, it, it spits out a vector inside of Rn and you get out of it a vector in Rm. The inputs, they live in something referred to as the domain, and the outputs are all inside of a codomain. And the other way that we'll sometimes write this is that we'll say that the transformation takes a vector x living inside of Rn and spits out a vector y which is living inside of Rn. And this sort of matches our y equals f of x notation we might have had in calculus. There is, however, one important condition. A function wasn't just any relationship between a domain and a codomain. There was a restriction on the types of relationships. In particular, it had to pass this thing called the vertical line test that we might have seen back in high school. And what that meant was that if I give you some input, and I put that input into my transformation, into my function, there is only one possible output. In other words, it's not the case that you put something in and then you get multiple different types of things out. You, you put one thing in and you get one thing out. In this case, you put one vector in and you get one vector out. So these transformations, to be transformations, have to have the property that there is a unique, in other words, only one, there is a unique output for every input. All right, so now let's go back to this matrix transformation that we saw at the beginning, where you, you took an x vector and transformed it into a b vector by multiplying by matrix A. That is going to be our first example of a transformation. So 
So indeed, I am going to think of AX equals to B as being something I'm referring to as a matrix transformation that takes these vectors living in Rn and gives out vectors living in R2.